let's give Evan Kaplan a really warm, warm welcome, and let's get this show started. That's great. Thank you. Thanks, Chris. Thanks for the warm welcome. Um, so, as Chris said, we do this. Um, we do this every year. We do one influx days based out of EMEA, and one influx days based out of North America. So when we do the influx days out of EMEA, I am based in California. So it really is a good morning to me. It's 1 a.m. And I had the great joy this morning of waking up my partner, Paul, um, at 4 a.m. in New York City, convincing him that we had already started and he was late, which was just made the top of my morning. So I come into this with a rush of energy. So first of all, to, to back on what Chris said, welcome everybody. It's great to have it. We have um, one of the benefits of having a virtual platform is just how many people can join. Um, and so we have a pretty large audience out there. I don't know how many are live now, but quite a lot of registrants, which is super exciting, um, super exciting for the broader community. So let me jump into it. Um, and so first of all, it's customary. So we, we get help putting on these events. Obviously, we get help from the community who contributes content and a bunch of other stuff and obviously our own team. But AWS and Microsoft were generous enough to sponsor this. As those of you know, we're, we're a multi-cloud platform and so you can purchase us on AWS or on Microsoft and there's also a free tier on both, so pretty exciting. So. Secondly, I wanted to thank, you know, we've been we've been really on the commercial side of the business. It's approaching five years now, and our customer base is 1,500 customers and growing. And if you see your name up here, great. If you don't see your name up here, that's great too. But I just wanted to shout out for the appreciation for the folks who allow us to continue to innovate and invest in this platform that many of you have built technology, even parts of your career around. And so thank you to our customers and that sort of stuff. So one of the things, oh, I keep advancing the slide. So let me walk you briefly through the agenda for the next two days and you get a sense of what's coming your way and how we're thinking about things. What I like about Influx Days, it's a chance every six months for us to sort of peg ourselves and decide what we want to communicate and how we want to communicate it. And what I mean about communication, I don't just mean for influx and us uh, ourselves but which which people in the community want to highlight for the cool things they've built and the thing that they've done on the platform and so i will make my opening remarks which are labeled here pretty short because um this has been advertised as a deeply technical conference single track and um, it's been a long time since i've been deeply technical and so people are waiting to hear paul speak and let it and let him get my remarks over um, but Paul will jump in and he'll do an opening keynote and he'll talk a bunch about IOX and, and, and the work that we're doing there, which we're super excited about. And then we'll have one of our store, one of our storage leaders and team to talk to you about uh, dashboards, tasks and alerts made simple. Um, and then Jess Ingresinolino, uh, who runs our Telegraph team, will be talking to you about how to get data into InfluxDB. It feels like at this point, at least from when I started, the number of ways to get data into InfluxDB are almost infinite, whether it's Cliver libraries or all the variety of telegraph collectors, all the other approaches. So, um, and then we'll have um, um, Vesselis from Mist.io. Mist.io is an orchestration platform who built a lot of stuff around Influx to talk about using telegraph to man and, and InfluxDB to manage a multi-cloud environments. And then Chris, with her bright, shiny smile in California time, we'll wrap up day one and then there'll be office hours. And actually we have a trivia event happening. So you'll wanna stay tuned for that. And then day two, um, it'll open up with our actual roadmap and engineering update. And so you'll get a good view of what's coming over the next year, the stuff that's in that, that is both on the commercial platform and the open source platform. And you get a sense of how to build around InfluxDB. That'll be done by Tim Hall, who runs our product team, and Ryan Betts, who runs our whole engineering team. And then we'll have an update from, um, from, our, from the folks at Grafana, who you know we work very closely with. And then Christina Robinson, who manages our own visualization engine and team, 
Um, we'll be talking to you about understanding how to use the visualization engine built with an influx. And then we'll have um, a, a presentation by HiveMQ, who focuses on MQTT, which is a plugins for collecting a lot of industrial IoT data. And they'll be presenting how they're using InfluxDB. These presentations by individuals are super helpful. It sort of gives you a practical, and whether you're doing an IoT application, a high frequency trading application, or a simple monitoring application or complex monitoring, just seeing how people sort of organize their thinking and how they work on this stuff and how they build on Influx is super helpful. So I hope you stay tuned. And then Michael Hall, who runs our community, um, Michael will be giving a community update and then Chris will wrap it up. And then there'll be some office hours for those, for those users of Grafana. It's also important to note that there is a, a variety of on-demand sessions that are, um, I believe they're live now, but they'll certainly be live at the end of the day if they're not. And so we have, and these are largely um, people external to Influx. We have David Henthorne, who is illuminating the dark data of critical infrastructure. He's at the Rose Holman Institute of Technology. Um, that should be a really interesting presentation. I will go back and watch it. And then our own Sebastian Spank will be talking about printing your own external input plugin for Telegraph so that you can quickly create your own plugin no matter where you stand. Um, and then Maxim from Dell will be presenting on monitoring your storage systems with Influx. And then Phil Day, Director of Engineering Configured Things. Configured Things works with, with spaces and smart cities and, and virtual commons and, and um, and Phil will be presenting on policy-driven real-time data filtering for IoT sensors, um, which is super interesting. And then um, AWS, Bernard from AWS will be talking about using um, InfluxDB within the AWS ecosystem for building on IoT use cases. So super excited about those on-demand sessions. Those will be available um, at, at the, they may be available now, but they definitely be available by the end of the day today. So you can watch them on your own time. So, so let me go into a couple of comments before I turn it over to Paul. So first of all, when Paul and I first met, um, we were talking about, I was trying to get to the essence of what, what they were working on with InfluxDB. And this was in 2015, and we got into a long discussion. And my summary of that discussion was really simple. Okay, so I get it. You build cool stuff for people who want to build cool stuff. And so that is means that we're often not in the limelight, that the people who build on our platforms are in the limelight, and that's the way we like it. Um, and so just, just the notion is we exist to build cool stuff so you can build cool stuff. And that cool stuff is monitoring applications at IoT applications, it's real-time analytics. There's been an amazing amount of stuff that we are super proud, everything from monitoring vaccines around the world to monitoring individual healthcare on people to monitoring big, big trends to monitoring critical infrastructure um, to building complex IoT system for, for spaces. Um, and so we're super gratified to see these things. And one of the things I love most about Influx Days is we get to do a little celebration of those things and people get to show what they've built. And, I, you know, in some ways I feel like um, I'm back in school seeing the cool stuff. So um, I want to, before I jump into, in, into the rest of my comments, I want to remind you is normally in, we would show you this as a scrolling screen, but there are now more than 1,300 contributors um, to Influx, to the Influx platform, and that's Telegraph, that's now even IOX, that's, um, that's Influx DB and the various components of the platform. And just super gratified that, that people are invested in this, that they contribute, that they're interested in being part of this, and feel really honored to have, you know, to, have, to be the really the steward of a platform that has its own life, that's independent of the company and that people have contributed to regularly. And this is the reason we exist. Um, and so just thank everybody for, for all the work they've done in helping us build out this platform. Um, and I'm almost done with this. And here we go. So what have you wrought? What have you built? What has this community built, both of Influx and all the community? 
So today, you know, I always like to, to put the statistics out because they have been changing pretty steadily. There are roughly 510,000 instances of influx that run every day, every day around the world. And that could be anything from a home hobbyist to, to the largest, the absolute largest corporations in the world. Um, in fact, a high penetration of the absolute largest corporations in the world. So far, there are 289 Telegraph plugins that are available to plug into virtually any service that you can imagine. InfluxDB gets the headline, but Telegraph may even be our most popular project. And that that project is out there and touches so many different people, whether it's Microsoft or Datadog or Google, a variety of very large players use Telegraph to collect data. And as I mentioned, 1,300 contributors and 1,500 and growing fast commercial customers that are fueling this community. And I talk about the size and the reach of this for a couple of reasons. One is when you build something on Influx, you give your time, attention, knowledge. You come up a learning curve, you learn how to do something, you become increasingly facile. And as we add capabilities to the platform and we add services to the platform, they become yours to use, yours to create, and yours to build on. Our hope is that you then take all of that information and wherever you go, whether it's, a, whether it's a project for your community, whether it's a project for your business, whether it's a project for your university, wherever you go, you're able to take that skill set. And our job is to keep that skill set relevant, interesting, and growing so that you now are empowered to build cool things wherever you show up, whether it's a new job, whether, whether it's a contribution to your community, or whether it's just something you're doing at home. And we're super proud of that and we're super committed to it. So, so our brand from the beginning, the thing that has made, made Influx sort of the leader in the, the modern time series market, and, and uh, Paul gets embarrassed when I say that, but, but in fact, it's really true, is sort of this, really what I would say the invention of modern time series is the ability in a single binary to build something relatively quickly Influx brand's always been time to awesome, the ability to build something relatively quickly and efficiently. And so build it, then scale it. But the important point is be able to build it quickly. And so our view is we want to hold to that brand. And as we express ourselves on different platforms, whether that's in the OSS or in the enterprise or in the cloud, we want to hold to that brand. Can you do this relatively quickly? Can you build important services and applications that drive your organizations quickly? Because if you can, you as a developer are uniquely empowered, you're uniquely effective. And that's the job is to build just a great platform to do that or a great tool to do it. And so we wanna be accountable to you that we're doing it. And it's not easy to keep, to keep engineering around making things simple. And we don't always get it right, but for the most part, this is what we care about. Secondly, I think you see now with, with, our, with our large investment in cloud and, and our belief is that most of these applications and services will, will, will run in cloud, is we wanna put things in cloud that make that even easier, right? Serverless, elastic, multi-cloud, hybrid cloud, the ability to use um, graphical libraries, the ability to build tasks on the data, the ability to build, indication and control systems, right, is we want you to build these applications um, in this next generation of cloud. That doesn't mean that we don't want you to build them in the open source, but we think having a complete platform involves both. And obviously we're making a very big investment in, in the cloud platform and having that grow. And we're really excited about that. So Secondly is a deep commitment to open source, which has only deepened over the last few years. And so we are now committers, obviously, on InfluxDB and Telegraph, as many of you are too, but also the, our new project, IOX, which Paul will be talking about. And we've become committers on Apache Arrow and Data Fusion as part of that. And so what you see across the board for Influx is a contribution across many, many walks of of open source. And I think it's an item of note um, that when we decided to build IOX, we made a decision which is pretty different than most commercial vendors is, is IOX is an MIT licensed project. 
Um, we chose not to use one of the secondary licenses or um, other open source licenses that put restrictions in. Our view is if you want a vibrant community, you fundamentally build it on as open a platform as you can in IOX. And then if there are closed source things that you want to put in, you create those separate and separate repositories. Um, and I feel very good about that decision. And so hopefully you guys will take a look at the IOX repositories after Paul is done. That, thirdly, we're going to be talking about IOX today. That's Paul Will. That's the future core of InfluxDB built with Rust and Arrow. Paul will talk to you about the objectives of the project. Um, but it, but suffice to say, what it means to you as users is dramatic changes in scale, performance, and cardinality support. And I, I believe it's a fundamentally game changer for the long term, the long term of InfluxDB. And, and why is that important to you is back to the original theme is if we're thinking about you taking this skill set, this ability to build stuff quickly and taking it from organization to organization, as you start taking it to organization to organization and, and the amount of data you're taking in and the response time that you need to do real time, IOC starts making a difference. So it is, it is our view is it's a step function change in capability, a capability that was already good. So Paul will be talking some more about that. And then we'll be talking about the whole platform over the next course of two days is and, and talking about completeness. Our view um, is that increasingly the requirement is is not just cloud, but in fact, cloud, edge, and edge expressed as enterprise and edge expressed as OSS, right? And that there's a common API that threads all of that together. And that completeness of a platform, in fact, is all three. And if you look at very many IoT use cases, there is often, a, you know, there is often Telegraph at the edge or InfluxDB at the edge. And when you think about pushing intelligence or even control down, having an edge device locally starts being meaningful. And when you start thinking about the cost of ingress and egress to the cloud, having an edge device is a really important. And so look for us to continue to innovate both in the cloud and at the edge, and certainly in open source. So 